Thanks to Asia Tees, ATs.com, for supplying the motors for this test. Uh, ATs is a sponsor of this channel and regularly provides stuff for me to test, review, build, or even give away. Uh, if you have a chance to go check them out, they sell a lot of good stuff for multi rotors, cars, buggies, etc. ATs.com. This is an Emacs red bottom motor. What I'm going to do, I, I think you all know about these motors. Uh, they come in a spiffy package. This is a very nice box, actually. You can reuse it for holding nuts and bolts and so on. This, th don't use this. I don't know about you, but these kind of rounded end destroys my nuts. That doesn't sound right. And, um, misc, 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 some foam. Don't throw this out. Keep this foam. This foam is good for making camera mounts, good for all kinds of things. Don't throw this out. Reuse everything. That, you can throw that out. And uh, ooh, that is a really this is a spiffy little box. Okay, that box is worth a couple dollars alone. I know, I'm way too concerned with packaging, but there you go. You know about these motors, uh, probably. You know that they perform well. I'm going to show you how to disassemble one of these motors. Now, some of you already know how to disassemble a motor, in which case I'll put a cat video in the, uh, in the lower right. So the first thing I want you to see is that there's a little... C clip or maybe it's an E clip. I, I can never remember the difference. There's a little clip here and it's in a little machined uh, race and it's holding the shaft on and you're going to need to remove that clip. And exactly how you do that depends on the type of clip that's on the motor. Now in this case you can see the clip has these little prongs and in fact you can get, they make special pliers just for this, but you may be able to get the tip of a rounded pair of needle nose pliers in there and spread that apart and take that clip off. Um, if you can't do that, you maybe have to work at it with a, with a screwdriver or something like that. If you're lucky, the motors will have come with some replacement clips for just such an occasion. These did not. So these clips may not be reusable. Depending on what happens when you take it off, you may find that it's not reusable. So I may be about to just foobar this motor since I don't have a replacement clip, but for you, I'll take the chance. Well, I've, uh, I've screwed this one up, so that's a shame. I'll need a replacement clip. So what you can do is you can just, uh, you can just bend the clip and destroy it and pull it off. Uh, or you can get the proper pliers mm, to, uh, to take it off correctly. So this is an RCX motor and it has the C style clip. And this kind you can usually just get a, uh, a screwdriver and just kind of push it up against the shaft and it'll pop right off and it won't damage itself, it'll go right back on. This style of clip is much thinner and you really probably ought to go correctly with the correct kind of uh, pliers to get it off or you just assume you're not gonna reuse it and make sure you have a spare on hand. So the next thing we see here is that we've got this brass uh, bushing here and that is to provide some spacing between the clip and the bearing. So I'm gonna take this bushing off. Not all motors include this, not all motors include that bushing. So if we take a look again at this RCX motor, we can see that the clip is right against the bearing. And that may not be an issue, but it may be an issue over time. Uh, as the clip turns, it's gonna be pressing against the bearing. And notice that the clip does rotate with the shaft. You do not want a situation where the clip is stationary and the shaft is rotating inside the clip because the clip will wear away at the at the shaft and eventually will come off. So in, in this scenario, the clip is turning, right? And it may rub on the bearing. So the higher end motors will include this brass bearing here and that'll provide a little bit of protection between the bearing and the clip. Once you've removed that, it's very easy to pull off the bell. You're going to want to just separate the bell. There will be some resistance from the magnets, but you just, there we go, it'll come right apart. So now let's take a look at the structure of the motor because it's actually really fascinating. We've got the windings here and those windings are connected to your motor wires. They're soldered to the motor wires and they carry the, the current that the ESC drives through the motor. The exact way that it's wired up is a topic for another video, but suffice to say that current moves through the windings to create a magnetic field that pulls the bell around in a circle. And here we've got the top bearing and the bottom bearing. Now on a good motor, these bearings will be snugly retained. 
I'm not going to take the time to disassemble this RCX motor, but if you look at one of my previous videos, I take the RCX motor apart and the bearing just drops out. It's just not machined to the same tolerance as this motor. And so it's a little bit looser in there and you're going to get a little bit more vibration. If I try to take this bearing out, I'm just going to come in there at a little bit of an angle and see if I can push this bearing out. Well, you can see it's in there quite snugly. Um, I may have to, uh, you're going to want to do that with something that's not sharp, that's not going to damage the bearing unless you're going to replace the bearing entirely because it's, you think it's damaged. You can see it's in there quite snugly. Uh, what I've done in the past is I've taken something, I've put it in there at an angle and then kind of smack it against the table to knock the bearing out. Uh, again, you're going to want to be careful doing that with a bearing that you intend to reuse because it may damage the bearing. Pushing the bearings in, of course, is much easier. But you can see that these bearings are quite snugly retained and that's a sign of, of good quality machining and a high quality motor. If we take a look at the bell, we can see here are the magnets and these are the magnets that are pulled by the electrical current uh, around and to make the motor spin. You can see in here this blue stuff is balancing mud and that tells you that the motor has been dynamically balanced. Uh, that is a good thing to find and you do not want to pick that out or clean that out. That's in there on purpose. Now, of course, my thought is, oh, that's great. You have balancing mud and it's, it's, you can see the mud is, you know, fairly precisely placed to make the motor perfectly balanced. But of course, the first time you put this motor into the dirt, it's full of mud of a different kind. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you. I like to blow it out with a compressed air or something, right? But it's never going to be this perfectly balanced again. So it is going to get out of balance the first time you get dirt in it. You can also see that these magnets are really thick. So take a look at the, the thickness of the magnets on the RCX versus the Emax motor and see that the Emax motor magnets are much larger and much thicker. That's me that means that the Emax motor is going to make more power. Uh, it's also potentially going to draw more current the, the exact fallout depends on the design of the motor, but you can clearly see that the Emacs has much bigger, thicker magnets. The other thing I want you to notice is that these magnets, do you see that they have a flat profile? There's another kind of magnet called an arc magnet, where the magnet is actually curved to fit the shape of the bell. And what an arc magnet does is it allows the magnet to ride closer to the poles, and therefore you get better uh, transference of the magnetic force or between the pole and the bell. And of course, if you think about how magnets work, if you just take two magnets and hold them in your hand, you know, as they get further apart, the magnetic force gets weaker very quickly. So, so this motor does not seem to have arc magnets in it. They have flat magnets, which means there's a little bit more spacing and, and maybe a little bit less power than they could make. That's a development that's come along since Emacs released this motor. It looks, in this case, like the Emacs does not have a grub screw on the shaft, on the bell. If we compare that to the RCX motor, you can see that the RCX motor has a grub screw right here, and it's uh, mates with a flat spot on the shaft. So in order to get the shaft out, you take out the grub screw, and then you can pull the shaft out. Now the shaft is press fit into the bell. Uh, and if it's done correctly, it's press fit in with some adhesive that holds it very, very securely. If you need to replace it, sometimes you need to heat the, shat, heat the bell to make the adhesive release. Other times you can just pull it out. Uh, it, when done correctly, the press fit is a very good choice. And in fact, many times with some of these cheaper motors with the softer aluminum, I've actually, I've, I've stripped these grub screws with very little effort. You have to be very careful not to strip these grub screws out. And then at that point, you know, you're kind of at, you're kind of taking a sh your life in your hands by flying the motor, because it, sure it's press fit in, but if they were counting on the grub screw to hold the shaft in, and now the grub screw's stripped, eh, what's going to happen? So on a quality motor, sometimes you'll find that they have a grub screw, and sometimes you won't, and there's there's no right or wrong answer there. If the shaft is press fit correctly and correctly secured, then it'll be fine. If you do need to get it out, the exact way of getting it out without damaging the bell. Uh, you could be in a little bit of iffy territory there. So a motor with the grub screw is more likely to be serviceable, but if it's not really up to spec, if the aluminum's not really up to spec, then it's not really a benefit. Uh, like I said, oftentimes, if I damage one of these, I'm not sure whether it's the bell or the shaft, and it's just not worth the trouble for me to go tearing this whole thing apart, trying to salvage a piece, and not just chuck it and get a replacement bell. 
Okay, so that's a, uh, that's a little, little primer on how to take these motors apart, some basic tips on maintenance, and a little bit of a comparison between this sort of higher end motor from Emacs and this slightly lower end motor from RCX. I still like this motor very much, by the way. I think this, this is like a $20 motor, so fine. And uh, the sponsor in me says, go buy this motor. Yes, buy me. Oh, you want me. But honestly, uh, when, when I spend my own money, I still uh, buy these motors. You know, I think if, you, if you're in a tight spot, these motors don't perform up to the level of the higher end motors, the $18 to $20 or maybe even $25 motors. They don't perform up to the level. You can see that they have smaller magnets. And also, they, uh, they're often made of softer aluminum, which means that they fly great the first day you fly them. But after a weekend of crashing them, they are really out of balance or maybe a few months of crashing them, they get really out of balance, at which point you're replacing them, at which point have you really saved any money. This is a $14 motor, this is an $18 or $20 motor. Now you might think, okay, well I'm gonna save 20 bucks on when I build my copter, but if you have to replace this motor entirely after three months and this one is still going, then this one may not be a bargain. All right, there you go. Hope that was educational.